free lice. I haven't put a blade in my food processor. I think I have just got it started. Oh God. <laughs> uh, can you see my soybeans? So I soaked mine for about like two days, right? How, yeah. how long have you soaked yours? I soaked mine for exactly one day. Okay, okay. Yeah, like mine like started to sprout a little bit. Uh, the sprout hasn't poked through, but I can see the sprouting started. It's pretty perfect right now. We'll hold um, one up to the camera so I can see that. No, like you can't really see this. It's not that great. Anyways, okay. um, so I'm really excited to make some tofu. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay, my food processor. So I have got like um, my water pre-measured already. This is like 10 cups of water I'm using. First, I, overall, I think I'm just going to use 12 cups. Um, but I divided up 10 cups for uh, to puree the, the soaked soybeans. And then I'll use two cups to like dilute the vinegar. Yeah. And I know I'm using vinegar, but you're using calcium sulfate, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, OK. Is that like a more uh, traditional way of making I tofu? It, it is as I understand. Yeah. There's a few different coagulants you can use. Um, as I understand, that's that's the most traditional. Um, vin vinegar as well, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know honestly how traditional it is. Okay. But I know, like in in my uh, local Chinese supermarket, that's what they sell. They sell cal calcium sulfate. So. Sure. Yeah, I think like all of the um, commercially made, right? They're all calcium sulfate. Uh, vinegar is like really home style. Mm. I've measured this out already. It's like quarter cup of vinegar, just a white vinegar, nothing fancy, right? Like, my only, my only concern about the vinegar was, will it make the, the finished tofu much more sour than than the calcium sulfate? No, it's not. Like uh, last time I made it, I can't tell like taste the uh, acidity at all. Like <laughs> all it is is just to make the uh, the soil milk turn like solid, right? Yeah. Uh, but then I because I strain away the water. And everything's fine. So I think we should just start. Um, and then um, for those who are watching on YouTube, I'm gonna put like a link underneath the, to link to my entire recipe because I'm gonna write this thing out. Right? We should, oh, we, yeah. Yeah. We, we should apologize in advance for the noise of the blender and the food processor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like one pound of beans, right? They are uh, really expanded. Um, I know it won't fit in one batch. Yeah. It's going to overflow, so I will just roughly uh, into three batches. Yep. This is all right, I think. You think but, what? Sorry. Like the thought of making tofu at home, it it's a little scary and complicated. Um, but actually, if you look at the ingredients, so simple, right? Um, I have just got soybeans, water, vinegar. Like that's it, right? It's everything. Okay. No, it's it's not complicated. I think it's it's one of these things when pe people look at the method mm -hmm. and they'll say, well. You can buy this stuff in the shop. Why do you not just do that? That's true. That's true. So I got this uh, nut milk bag. So much zinc 
then uh, using the cheesecloth, Yeah, I think a blender is definitely the way to go with this. My food processor is not really uh, pureeing this up finely enough, so I'm, I'm going to plan B. Uh, what's happening with your food processor? Uh, nothing. It's just it's not it's not pureeing the it's not pureeing the beans finely enough. So I'm going to use my stick blender instead. Because I think you know you're going to get more of the soy I don't know content out of it, right? Like. Uh, exactly, yeah. Curate it more finely. It's going to be a while to like <laughs> filter through. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, getting a good, uh, a good workout there, though. Yeah, I'm wondering, like, we should, we, 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 I know we talked about that last time, we really should be looking for a recipe that we can use the leftover, um, like the soil, whatever you call that, pulp? Yeah, I, I actually, I actually had an idea about that. What is it? Uh, I was actually thinking about um, uh, using it as a, a mash for fermenting, for making wine. I'm making wine? Wine? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why not? I, I expect that. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that must be a thing. Okay. Well, if it's not a thing, now it's a thing. If, well, yeah. It's going to be a thing once you start uh, doing it. Anyway, even if it's a disaster, it's, it's, it's not a disaster that really costs any money, is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's true, because you're going to throw away these. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think they can be like uh, baked into like bread or something. I just haven't had the time to uh, try it out. Aye, right, for sure. They'll, 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 I'm sure there's uh, clever people of ingenious ideas for it on the internet. Oh yeah, that's much, much better. Okay, I don't know if you can see my soil pop. I can. Kind of like a, like a, what would you call it? Like a Play-Doh now? Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. 
So that's like one, I just process one third of it. I think you're a little bit ahead of me. And if you can see it, um, I strain the liquid, it's like a soya milk, yep. uh, into a giant boba. I transfer it into a pot um, first as I'm working my way through. Because I don't want my, you know, the nut milk bag swimming in the soya milk. Yeah, exactly. Actually, when you come to make tofu, right? Wow. How much water you use? It, it's not really that strict. Like, it's a no. I, I I don't think so. As I say, it's a bit like when you make um when you make fresh cheese. Right. Doesn't it's not it's not so important if you if you use more water you might need to you you might need to add a little bit more coagulant but I think you're you're going to get roughly the same amount of uh, curds at the end of it. Exactly. Um. Yeah. So for me, I'm using one pound of beans and uh, twelve cups of water in total. And I, I know you use a metric system and you have what, like half kilo of beans and three liters. Something. Yeah, I use I use a metric system because it's better. So you know that like when uh, like when I was growing up, we used metric system too. Yeah. It's only uh, when I came to Canada, I had to learn this pounds and cups and tablespoons. <laughs> Tell you, you need to teach them there, Yang. Uh, and well, you know, it, I don't know, but it's a good exercise, like for for your math side of the brain. What is that? Like the left side or the right side? I don't think my brain has a math side. So one kilo, uh, if you're using a uh, metric, right? One kilo is two point two pounds. Yeah. What is a pound? A pound's like four. Is it four hundred and fifty grams? Yeah, four hundred, four hundred fifty, uh, four hundred fifty-four. Okay. It's not even like, a, I don't know, like a e easy to remember number. <laughs> well, if, I think if, I, if I'm right, I think the, the imperial system, it's, it's, it's designed to be, things are designed to be in multiples of three. Huh? Really? I think, we, yeah, I th well, it, certainly in the, in the UK um, imperial system, actually, I know that it's, it's a bit different to the Canadian one. Okay, interesting. Because I think a UK a UK pound is more than a U, than a US and Canadian pound. Or like a UK pint is more is is more volume than a US and Canadian one. Like they can make things more complicated. <laughs> if everybody just used metric. Oh, interesting. Like I just think Canada follows, uh, you know everything of the of you know of British almost <laughs> uh, but but when it comes to measurement uh, they're so different. And and when it comes to driving on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> driving on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> Oh my god, my arms are killing me. <laughs> You're gonna have to put that like in the middle of the screen because I can't I'm not gonna be able to see it. 
Ta bé. My kitchen setup's not quite as uh, ideal as yours for, for making videos. So apologies that the camera keeps moving around. <laughs> I thought you moved it. It was your hand. I no, did. I, I did. No, no. I, I, but what I mean is, I'm going to have to keep on doing that because, yeah. You know, you know those uh, um, what do you call that? Those like camera sticks that you hold your phone up and then like it just pivots, following yeah. you. Maybe you should get one of those. Yeah. Well, I've, I, it's on a, it's on like a big tripod just now, but it still needs manual intervention. Whew. I'm going to have some biceps after this. <laughs> this is cool. You, my um, soy milk just now looks, it, it's like thick and pasty. It's, it's quite pleasing. I hear like a timer. Is it on your side? That's uh, my dishwasher uh, telling me that it's finished. It tells me for about 10 minutes. I don't, I don't know what it wants me to do. <laughs> Because the dishes are too, the dishes are too hot to touch just now. So. Empty it out. Oh, I splashed some soy milk on my. So what are you planning to do with the tofu ones? This uh, I don't know. Um, a, a couple of things actually. I might ferment some, and one of my favourite things to do with tofu is to to deep fry it. There's a, a recipe I think we spoke about before called uh, pipa tofu. <laughs> you remember then, that? I remember that, and and this Chinese person has never heard of pipa tofu. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But no, no, it's 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 quite cool. So you mix, um, you you basically puree up tofu. Um, I think you put some egg in it as well, and then you put like a mixture of other things, so um, some Chinese sausage. Um, spring onions and, and some other ingredients. Huh. I have to and, say, it's very delicious. Yeah, yeah. You add some, you add a little bit of, uh, I think it's rice flour to it, and then you, you form it. You, you basically um, take a spoon of the mixture and just put it into the hot oil, and, and it puffs up into this sort of oval shaped, like a rugby ball kind of shape. And then you serve it with a serve it with a spicy sauce. It's very, very good. So that's why it's called pipa. Because yeah, it's, uh, apparently it looks like the instrument that's got the yeah. same name. I wonder, what's pipa called in um, English? The instrument. Uh, I I don't know. Is it a kind of lute? A kind of you lute. You lute. It, it's like a. It, it's it's almost like a, like a. It's it's like a stringed instrument, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. And, and you, you play it like a guitar, but it's 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 got a, the the body of the instrument's a kind of bowl shape. Yeah. Yeah. So that that family of instruments, you, you'd call it. A, I think you'd call it a lute. L U T E. I only thought lute is like something you blow into, like a wind instrument. No, that's that's a that's a, a flute, an F flute. <laughs> <laughs> a flute, a lute, and a flute. <laughs> yes. Very, very different things. Good. Now I learned something new. <laughs> okay. Do you know? Do you know pipa can also be a fruit in Chinese? I did. I did indeed know that because when I first uh -huh. when I first uh, made the the pipa tofu and I googled pipa, that's what came up was the fruit. Uh -huh. But then I found out that it wasn't named after the fruit; it was named after the musical instrument. Uh -huh. Excuse the noise of my stick blender. I think it's on its way out. <laughs> There's another deep fried tofu dish that I make. It's called Bear's Paw. Can you position your blind, uh, a blender into the middle of the screen? Yes, thank you. You yeah, see, you can tell how much of an amateur I am at this. <laughs> uh. 
think I need to hire a cameraman. See, the problem is because of the, the because of the setup of my kitchen, I can't actually see the 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 monitor is behind me, so I can't actually see what you can see just now. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to make sure your camera is properly positioned. Not here to cook. <laughs> You've had a promotion. This is the best I can do. I, I'm lacking arm strength. So oh. for someone a little stronger can get a little more soy milk out of this bag. But I give up. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have the same problem. I have, I have biceps like knots in a thread. Well, although maybe after, maybe after this has been made, I'll have a... Uh, I have much bigger biceps, I think. So the process it, it, it's a little bit of uh, time consuming. Yeah. But nothing beats um, fresh homemade tofu, right? Exactly. It's not that the complicate. It's not that the process is complicated. It, is, it just takes a bit of time. That's all. But it's 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 very rewarding once it actually turns out. So to me, I think the benefit is, uh, especially if, if people don't have access to like Asian stores or quality tofu, yeah. um, I, I got my soybeans all organic, right? So at least I can make organic tofu and my beans are like sprouting already and sprouted organic tofu, honestly, they're not that easy to find. I've never seen it. I've never seen. There you go. So now there's a there's, a, there's a very big um, there's a very big Chinese community here as well. Hence why we have at least one uh, Chinese supermarket, and even that doesn't sell it. Yeah. Well, I think I'm just lucky because I live in Canada, right? and I live in a very like Asian community. We have access to these kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Even then, it's not so easy for me to always get uh, sprouted tofu. Well, well, sometimes I can buy stuff from Whole Foods. Whole Foods also have uh, quite a option and a variety of. Whole Foods is that a shop there? Choices. What? Whole Foods is that, is that the name of a shop? Yeah, Whole Foods okay. is an American. It's actually one of my favorite places to shop. Yeah. There are only a few Whole Foods in Toronto. One, like, yeah. to me, I'm lucky. Or maybe I'm just strategic. I know. <laughs> oh, my arm's killing me. I'm so unfit, it's embarrassing. Yeah, I was I was gonna tell you there's another um there's another dish that I sometimes make with uh, with tofu called bear's paw tofu, where you cut the tofu. It, it's very similar to pipa except you don't add other ingredients to it. And you cut the tofu into big into big slices before you deep fry it and you serve it with a spicy sauce. Do you ever notice that Chinese dishes are always named after something that pe people always try to resemble the dish with something else? It can never just be called deep fried tofu. You have to right. liken it to a bear's paw or a musical instrument, you know? 
Well, especially if you look, you talk about the more traditional recipes and more authentic stuff that you get from a uh, Chinese restaurant in China, right? Yeah. I think I think it's because um, I think because uh, what do you call it? Like. Mm. Because like poetry and like literature, like um, the, uh, in in the past, I don't know, like thousands of years, are very developed. Um, a lot of the traditional dishes I, I guess they they all have like very poetic names yeah exactly but then there's other places like some of the oh, oh. <laughs> drop drop my camera like some of the um is it Xinjiang entertaining I'm glad you find it entertaining. <laughs> Life happens. All right, there we go. Are we good? Especially in the kitchen, you know, like my husband bought me a fire extinguisher on Christmas. He bought you a fire extinguisher as a Christmas present? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think that's brilliant. That's a reflection of uh, what, what happened, what really happens in the kitchen, right? Oh, that's brilliant. So don't feel bad about what's going on on your end. I have worse. Have you had to use a fire extinguisher yet? Oh, gosh, no. You know these things have a use-by date? Do they? Yes, they do. How did you know? Oh, you should check. It might be time. Uh, you maybe need to tell them to get you another one uh, for this Christmas. I'm just going to keep it quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, if I if I spent the money on a fire extinguisher, I'd want to get my money's worth. I'd, I'd have to use it at least once, even if it was just, even if it was just for fun. <laughs> well, that would be a great reason to know the expiry date. Um, put, put it in my phone calendar, and at least I use it right before it expires. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Honestly, because I, uh, I I have to do like a, an offshore survival course every now and again, and it includes uh, fire training. So you get to use all the fire extinguishers, you know, the water, the the expanding foam, the powder and stuff. It's actually good fun. <laughs> why, why do you have to do that course? What is it for? For? Yeah, so if I, if I go offshore, uh -huh. you know, if, if, if you're working on the ships or the rigs or whatever, and a fire breaks out, you need to know what to do about it. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's going to be it's going to be too late by the time you you know you run and find somebody else who knows what they're doing so <laughs> I think I'm pretty impressed by these uh, nut milk bags mm -hmm. honestly they are better than the cheese cloths I, I tried to use them. Yeah, I've I've got one as well. I use it quite a lot. It's 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 very very good. It tends to it strains things really really well. What else do you use it for, or what do you generally use it for? I use it for lots of things. I use it for making uh, use it for making jams. If I when I make my uh, if I make like homemade uh, stocks like bone broths, mm -hmm. I, I use it to to strain that as well. I know it's not completely necessary, but it's it's kind of nice if you depend on the dish you make to have like a nice clarified, yeah, clarified right. stock. So the the nut bag does a really good job of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but why do you need, uh, use it for jam? I don't get it. Well, you use it to if if you've been boiling up a load of fruit, you want to squeeze as much of the the fruit flavour out of that as you can. The the nut bag makes sure that you that you only get the liquid out of it and none of the solids. Because sometimes, it, like you get a. And then what? Like, do you use the liquid to make jam, or do you use the solid to make jam? You boil, you boil the fruit. Uh -huh. With the, you boil the fruit with the sugar, but then once it's boiled enough, you want you want to strain all the the fruit out of it. D depending on the kind of jam you're making, I think jam and 
means something different here than it does with you. You get jam and jam and jelly. So sometimes these are called jelly bags. It just makes sure that you you don't get any of the solids through. Interesting. Oh, oh shoot! Some something just exploded in your kitchen. I just bend my <laughs> on the pendant light above the wall. <laughs> Hopefully. Everything's good. I checked my, my pendant light still in good shape. Who knew that making tofu could be so dangerous? Mm. Just, uh, you know, that fire extinguisher alone is not enough. Kitchen <laughs> <I> save. <laughs> Stop it. Alright, I'm gonna start boiling. Nice. Okay. That's a lot of soil milk I got. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm I haven't used most of my water just now. I've got this like really nice, smooth, sort of moussey, creamy thing going on here just now. I think I'm gonna get quite a good yield. Nice. So what kind of fire extinguisher is it? What material, what does it contain? I don't know. I never looked at it. Mm, you should look at it because you need to read the instructions because if it contains, you know, depending on what it contains, you need to use it in different ways. Okay. Um, you should really familiarise yourself with this, Yang. Uh, are you teasing me or...? No, I'm, I'm, I'm actually being deadly serious. Okay. <laughs> Look, let's say, for example, you're deep frying something, okay? I don't. And I know, but let's, I'm talking hypothetically. Sure. Let's say you're deep frying something, for example, and the oil goes on fire. You're not going to take a, a water-based fire extinguisher and spray it into the hot oil, are you? I have no idea what base this is, okay. Inspect monthly or more frequently when required. Check that extinguisher is charged and undamaged. Gee, charge. Nozzle is unobstructed. I... My god, this stick blender's loud. I don't know, okay. I'm... It, should tell, it, should tell you what, it should tell you what's actually in there, because if it's for a kitchen, you generally don't use water fire extinguishers. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Sorry? It says dry chemical fire. Yes, so it's it's yeah, so it's a dry it's a dry powder. That's a good one for a kitchen. Because the reason you use dry powder in a kitchen is because if you get a fire in a pot, the mm -hmm. dry powder will, will smother it, starve it of oxygen, and the fire will go out. But if you use water, all it's gonna do is, is splash the hot oil over the rest of the kitchen.
So what are you going to do with your tofu? You never told me. I don't know. I don't cook with tofu that often, to be honest. Well, there's a really nice recipe that I've heard of called pipa tofu. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard about it too, about like, what, 10 minutes ago? <laughs> I'm telling you, Yang, you should embrace the deep fry. Yeah, I love tofu in soups. This is why I'm making the firm tofu. I, we're making the firm tofu. We're make, not making a salt. Yeah. Version. Um, I think the firm tofu are more delicious. They're more versatile. Um, I love them in soups. Anyways, I love I love hot pot. I love tofu in hot pot. I like. I used to. I sometimes use tofu uh, in meatballs. Mm -hmm. You know, like people put like bread crumbs or starch um, or tapioca starch in meatballs yeah. to make it like tender. Yeah. Um, like tofu is a good one. Like if you know, if people eat soy, right? Some people don't eat soy. Some people eat soy. And tofu is like so controversial this, these days. Um, most people, actually, most people blogging in my niche don't even accept tofu as a healthy choice. Yeah. I think everything is in moderation comes, right, in moderation when we eat. Um, and a lot of the issues, we can address them by the way we cook them. No, you're right. If I think I agree. Everything's fine in, in moderation. And even, you know, even where there's ethical issues involved in, I don't know, in, in using a particular ingredient, mm -hmm. it's, it's not practical to cut, you know, to, if, if you find something undesirable or unethical, it's not necessarily convenient to just completely cut it out from your life completely. But you can, you can maybe cut it down, you know, you can't. Well, I think do. it all comes down to like balancing the, the pros and cons, right? If we're getting, yeah. so tofu has, uh, and soybeans still have a lot of uh, nutrients and um, many of the benefits that we, we don't get from other food, why skipping that? Uh, but a few of the issues, I think, one is people worry about uh, tofu containing this compound uh, mimic estrogen. Uh, so if we don't eat in, uh, access, I don't really see that as a huge problem. Um, and then the fact that it's interfering with like thyroid function and a and, and lot of concerns on that. Um, like something I, I kind of want to like, or you know, just thinking out loud, right, is I feel in Asian countries, we eat a lot of uh, seaweed, uh, mm -hmm. sea vegetables. And those are, um, you know, the kind of food that like um, help to strengthen your thyroid function and, and you know balance it out. So um, maybe the solution is not to cut out certain food that you think has some kind of harm effect because then we're gonna just be cutting out all food, right? Instead, basically, yeah, right. To, to balance them with. Uh, Adding into it. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, the GMO issue with soybean. Well, organic tofu is GMO, right? Mm -hmm. So this is another thing about making them at home is I know my soybeans and right the ingredients I use. Um, and when it comes to the concern of, you know, tofu containing like phytic acid that's interfering with digestion, um, absorption of minerals, the soaking process is, it's basically like reducing that. Yeah. And like, and sprouting, right? Activating all the minerals in the soybean. My soy milk is really, really thick. Hmm. I guess it's your mesh that's um, 
maybe got like holes too big. Did you uh, did you use the same mesh last time? Yeah. Oh no, there's no there, there's no um, no solids in here. I think maybe I just pressed oh. it much better than I did last time because like I'm looking at it and it's it's silky smooth, you know, pure bright white. It's. Okay. You know what? I think my is starting to boil already. It's starting to boil, I guess. Um, you just need to boil this for maybe a couple minutes. Um, it's got a lot of foam on top. I will start my process now. Yeah, I'm going to be quite a while. It's going to take a, take quite a long time for mine to come up to the boil. I'm going to start skimming out the foam. Like I have one of these, I don't know what you call it, like a skimmer? Yeah, it's a skimmer. Like a mesh skimmer? Yeah. Very handy if you're going to deep fry something. <laughs> <laughs> you can get a deep fry thing out of your head today. <laughs> I don't eat deep fried food, like just period. I don't eat fried food, period. Never, never fried. Well, not, I, I wouldn't say never. Um, when I was younger, I would make deep fried food for sure. I, I don't make a lot of deep fried food, but just saying just saying deep fried to somebody a lot of people think that that's just a dirty word but it's as she say it's like everything if, if you only do it every now and again it's not going to do you any harm yeah okay i'm not going to judge you for eating deep fried food Are you planning to get one of those like air fryer thing? I don't know. Do you know one of my neighbors? I was visiting one of my neighbors actually, and she just bought a, an air fryer, mm -hmm. and she says it's it's one of the best things that she's ever bought. And she actually said that I can borrow it from her um, if I want to try it out, so I can decide if I, I want to get one myself. Nice. Yeah. Then yeah, you should. Oh, definitely. Well, yeah. I say I don't like having I don't like having too many gadgets in the house, but <laughs> but I have heard a lot of people say very good things about an air fryer. I might have to end up adding some more water to my uh, mixture. Actually, I don't know how well it shows up on the camera here, but it's very very uh, thick and foamy. Oh, wow. See how the foam just. Yeah. Okay. I have got my foams pretty much all removed. Yeah. I thought I was going to come to a boil already, but I don't know why it's still. Not just give it a stir. I just, I just want to be careful, uh, not have it burn in the bottom. Yeah, I I'm actually adding a bit more water to mine because it's, yeah. I think it might burn. It's just a little bit thick. So. Yeah. Have a lot more solid through, uh, like the solid sinking into the bottom. That's gonna burn. Um, yeah. My nut bag is doing, like, an extraordinary job this time. Um, so, I'm good. I think, I think I was just maybe a little bit, um, strong, strong. Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I really, I really pressed the buggery out of this. <laughs> no, I'm bragging about your muscles. <laughs> okay. All right, so, uh, my is almost, um, uh, almost boiling and then there's more foam coming up so I will have to uh, skim it a little more. Um, in the meanwhile I'm just gonna mix my vinegar and water together. So this is like another two cups of water I measured right? Uh -huh. And uh, this is half, uh, sorry, 
quarter cup of white vinegar. Yep. Just mix it together. Dilute it. Now it's ready to go. My food is completely boiled now. So when the soy milk start boiling, it's really easy to overflow the pot, right? Be careful. Turn the, turn the heat down if you see the boiling start. Yeah, I think even more so than like just boiling regular milk. Mm -hmm. This stuff, this stuff. If you if you take your eye off it for a second, it'll just boil right over. For sure. See, Keep your that. fire extinguisher nearby. <laughs> Good that I have it. <laughs> I don't even know how to use that thing. Uh, can you hear my kids talking in the background? Uh, nope. Well, can you see on the screen what's happening? I can. Do I need to turn the light on? No, it looks okay. Is it better with the light on or better without? Uh, uh, it probably is better with the light on actually. Yeah, I'm just afraid of all the shadows that make it even harder to see. As long as the shadow doesn't bother. I thought you would have had yourself some studio lighting by now. <laughs> My such, an, lighting, such an amateur. <laughs> My studio lighting is the sun. I like sunlight, not the sunlight. They're the best. Okay. So I turned my soil milk completely off already. Mm -hmm. Kind of let it cool for a minute. Yeah, you'll have to bear with me. My uh, this pot takes forever to come up to the boil. It's taking a little longer time than we expected to make tofu, right? All right, it's a wee bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is this the magic of it happen? It was magically happening. I'm saying here comes the magic. <laughs> Over here? Yeah, because we're waiting to see it curdle. Look at that. Let's see. Whoa. Is it going to happen? I, I it looks like it's curdling from here. Magic. Ooh, it is happening. Look at that. I'm going to give it a little more time. You're going to get a good big block of tofu out of that. Hopefully.
Nice. I'm gonna scoop it up so you can see what's happening with my. Yep. Okay. I think it's turning out beautifully. Perfect. Yeah, the, the liquid is becoming more clear now. This is great. Yeah, I think you're going to get a quite, quite a lot of tofu out of that. I hope all of it fit in my tofu bread. Last time I made a block, yeah, definitely smaller than the press I have right now. You see, I didn't have a press last time, right? So um, I would suggest if people don't have a press, you know what I used last time? Um, I used I used those like, fruit basket I get from the grocery store, like those fruit basket. You take the out and then but make sure it's like a harder plastic because if you use like a soft plastic it just melted right like because the liquid's too hot um yeah. or or you have to like cool the li liquid down and then pour it into it um but if it's like a harder plastic i, I think it will be fine and then just put the cheesecloth inside it's like a cheap way of like just making it i kind of like made it work even though i melted my plastic a little bit um, <laughs> This time, but I still got a block of tofu, right? Uh, without investing what, like, fifteen bucks on a proper tofu press. Yeah. But now, things we got the tofu press. We did say that we're gonna make more stuff. Yeah, it's it's if you're gonna make tofu quite a lot, it's not it's not actually a bad investment. It's not that expensive when you think about it. Honestly, I'm not gonna make tofu all the time. I have like Asian grocery stores just step away from me and I can get like organic, even organic <laughs> tofu sometimes. Besides, I don't eat that much tofu. <laughs> it's not about the convenience so young, is it? It's about the satisfaction when it's something that's homemade. Sure. Um, I do want to use the tofu press to make some cheese. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we we did talk about like making what like making fermented um, cashew cheese. Oh, you're right enough. Yeah. 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 So that will be exciting. Okay, let me explain my setup over here. So I use one of those like uh, steamer rack thing mm -hmm. inside. A mixing bowl and then I put my tofu press on top this is so that like the water will drain right yeah. uh, instead of like just you know sitting in a pool of liquid Are you to the step of uh, doing the calcium sulfate yet? No, my pot still got quite a while to come up to the boil. Then you need to move the camera again. <laughs> you mean you mean you're not in watch, enjoying watching my pot sitting there? <laughs> no, I, I cannot see your pot in the middle. Pot's in the middle? Yeah, I want a pot to be in the middle, right? So I can see what's going on. Well, I've got the lid on it so that it boils quicker. Yeah, but no, 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 like your, your, your camera's off center. Oh, how's that? Uh, a little bit more, the other side. Yeah, okay, this is better. <laughs> I 
Okay, talk me through what what are you gonna do with your calcium sulfate? So it just it, it just comes in like a powder form. So I add um, I use I'm using about I'm using about a tablespoon because I used I used less than a tablespoon last time and it didn't coagulate enough. So I'm using about a tablespoon this time and then just putting maybe um, half a cup of my my water in it. And then basically, it, the the rest of the process is same as what I did. I just exactly, exactly. Just pour it in and wait for the magic to happen. It's a good thing. It's quite a big tofu press you've got. It's a good thing you got quite a big one because uh, you've got quite a lot of curds there. I hope it will. Um, I have no doubt it will. This is the thing. It's like when you know I, I make the uh, Indian uh, paneer cheese, which is basically exactly the same process, except you, um, you use cow's milk instead of soy milk. And it's one of these things you actually can't really screw it up. Mm. My kids are so loud, and tell them to cry. <laughs> well, if, it, if it's any consolation, um, can't hear them on the on the camera. When's on camera? You know, your your dog Olaf has never like caused any issues, right? It's always very obedient. No, he's not always very obedient. Okay. Absolutely not. In the in the house he's obedient, but not at not outdoors. <laughs> I can guarantee you if somebody was to walk past the house just now, you, you would hear him barking for sure. <sighs> but I took him for a I took him for a, a very, very long walk this morning. Um so he's he's, he's really tired just now. Where did you buy your calcium sulfate? Uh, it was actually from a, a homebrew uh, website here, because mm -hmm. they they use calcium uh, calcium sulfate when you um, for brewing beer sometimes as well to balance the acidity. Okay. I had to press mine a little bit because I'm running out of space. <laughs> Sorry. Did you say calcium sulfate is used to making beer? Yeah, I know. Um, sometimes when, when brewing beer, people add calcium sulfate to, to balance the acidity of it. Oh, I see. Hmm. I, I, I don't I don't understand the process completely, but as I understand, it's to to make sure that the the yeast behaves properly. Interesting. Well, um, <laughs> at least we know calcium sulfate doesn't turn beer into solid. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think eating beer would be very enjoyable. Imagine a lot of beer. Got this foam on my um, soy milk is like it's like egg whites. You could wow. make meringues with this. Okay, well, now we're saving all the discards. <laughs> we're making <laughs> tofu meringue and the. And a tofu bread. <laughs> <laughs> and tofu. That's that's actually interesting. I wonder. I wonder if this this is really foamy. This mixture. I'll bet you could probably add that to a to a batter to make it rise. Because okay. that's that's how egg whites work, isn't it? Yeah. 
you beat it till it becomes foamy and then when you apply heat to it in the batter the the air bubbles expand and it, it's an interesting idea if you, you think of it from like the, the physics and the, the chemistry yeah. perspective i wonder what's gonna work and what's not okay i'm just like fidgeting with this thing now um but i did manage to get like an entire one pound of like right like the soybean turned into soy milk, kind of curdled, all poured into this one tofu press. So like just right well, for the balance of the you know the the quantity, this block of tofu it's made with one pound of soy beans. Nice. Okay. But uh, still liquidy. I'm going to get something heavy to sit on top. Let me see what I can do. Maybe I'll just use these. Uh... If you want, if you want something heavy to put on top of it, I can send you my last electricity bill. <laughs> 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 okay, I was going to use <laughs> tofu, uh, the, the solid in solids. Uh, let's see. I don't know if you, how well this shows up on the camera, but I've got like one point. I've got one point seven liters of foam from mine. Whoa. <laughs> I'm just throwing away uh, all the water I collected. And, uh... <laughs> Let's hope I don't end up with like, a disaster. Possible. I told you that this this can't fail. Uh, no, it's like I'm doing some dangerous stunt. Does it involve fire? No. Well, that's okay. A, a jug, jug of water. I have some broken glasses in this tofu. <laughs> Yeah, that wouldn't be good. All right. You see, like, I don't know if you can see, but I end up with this much liquid. Yeah. Like, clear liquid, right? This is completely garbage. I'm going to pour it down the drain. Unless you think of a way to repurpose this as well. I, 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 uh, what? I, I honestly don't know what you can do with the... As I say, if, if it was, you know, if it was cheese, then obviously the, the, the liquid that you're left with is whey and there's a lot of things you can do that. In fact, you can ferment whey and that's something we should do. Yeah. Well, you know, like I, my way is different. Like I strain my milk kefir and yeah. I get like probiotic whey and that's already fermented. Uh -huh. I don't, I don't really make like, I don't really curdle the milk to make cheese. I strain my fermented milk to make cheese. It's so different. Um, all right, this is garbage. I did take a sip. It's pretty delicious. It's not uh, acidic at all, despite the quarter cup of water, uh, vinegar, I put in. Yeah. My soy milk's at about 80 degrees Celsius just now, so a few more minutes to go, I think. Notice I, said, notice I said Celsius and not Fahrenheit. What's happening on your end? You're just boiling? Yeah, I, took, I just took a, a temperature of the, the milk. It's a, it was about 80 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit.
How long do you think you're going to have to press your curds for? Um, I can see water like dripping down. Yeah. Let's see. Can you, I don't know if you can see from your angle, but the there's like drops of water falling yeah. to the bottom of the bowl. I I really don't know if you can see this at all. No, I can. I can see. Can? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think we'll have to make a intuitive guess and judgment, right? And it really depends on how firm you want the tofu to be. I I don't mind firmer. So I think I'm probably gonna um, press it for like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd, I'd, you, I'd see your ones like a, obviously you have to put weights on top of it. The one I've got, the press I've got is much, much smaller than your one, but it's got like a, it's got like a crank on it that you, mm -hmm. that you, that you press with it. So you don't have to put, put weights on top of it. I think I'm just going to uh, make a guess based on uh, the water drops. And yeah. then water drops slow down. I think that's about it. Like I, I, I like my firm, but I think, yeah. you know, um, if people want it to be softer, even the way it is, is pretty good. Yeah. Like as is, it's pretty good. Like right now, um, I, I think it's, it's a perfect piece of tofu already. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I was looking at a guide earlier on that was telling me that if, if you're pressing your tofu manually like you are, mm -hmm. you want for, for, a, for a medium textured tofu, you want to put a one pound weight on top for 15 minutes. For a medium firm, you want to put two pound weight on top for 15 minutes. And for a very firm, you put a three pound weight on top for 20 minutes. Huh. Okay. Okay, so uh, what I think is, I don't think it makes a huge difference, to be honest, because uh, I think our um, our ingredients, more or less, it come out to be like a firm tofu anyways. Yeah. Like, I don't think my recipe will produce like soft tofu, no matter what. No. Like, based on the amount of vinegar I use, Right, um, and I'm aiming for the firm tofu. So this will be. So all of the ingredients I'm gonna list it out, and then the the process and everything for firm tofu. Uh, I will put a link and then. The video, if it's on YouTube, I'm going to put a link under the video. If it's on my blog, of course, it's already yeah. um, in there. And I'm excited. <laughs> I know you fermented your tofu last time and it did turn out really well. Mine just flopped. Yeah. I, I, I still think you should try again. I think you just, it was just bad luck. Maybe. You know, so, like, I, oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, I was going to, I was going to say, remind me, what, what is it that you tend to do with, with fermented tofu, even if you buy it? Oh, I buy them all the time. Yeah, but what, what do you do with it? I, I make, um, hot pot sauce, so, so, dipping sauce. You mm -hmm. see, I love hot pot, right? Like, did I mention hot pot twice? So if I have tofu, I'm going to cook the tofu in hot pot. And if I have uh -huh. fermented tofu I'm gonna use it in the dipping sauce for my hot pot. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a little bit confused about something do, do you like hot pot or not? I do like hot pot. Okay. <laughs> just 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 so we get that cleared up. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like I really love hot pot. <laughs> but trust me like fermented tofu in the hot pot sauce is delicious. I, I, I believe you. It's more of a northern style. I am not sure if like the southern hot pot uh, can hang fermented tofu. 
like there are so many different flavor, um, like variety for for the dipping sauce, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also said that like I like to add a little bit of the uh, the ch chai flour paste. Uh -huh. um, yeah. I believe it's fermented and you know since you have like foraged all of the wild garlic i'm wondering if you ferment that and turn it into a paste it's gonna taste more or less like um chai flowers well i'm, I'm interested to find out as i say I, I got a bumper haul today so i'll be starting some of that fermenting tomorrow for sure mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really excited about that one because i think after probably I would say probably next week is the, the last week that wild garlic is going to be available. So I, I made sure that I got as much as I could today. Right. So you are so lucky that you get to forage wild garlic. I have no clue what's even growing around. Well, see, not, neither did I. And, and it's annoying me because, like, you know, I've, I've, I've lived here m my entire life. Mm -hmm. And this wild garlic's been growing in these places for my entire life. And it was only this year that I ever found out about it. <laughs> okay, it's better late than never. No, for sure, for sure. I'm, I'm making the most of it. Okay. I've got like a, I made a jar of uh, wild garlic pesto that I've got in my fridge just now. It's really, really tasty. Oh, wow. So I've used it, I've used it in pastas and I've used it in, in gnocchi. But I think the, the my favourite thing that I did with it was a... I got some uh, trout from the supermarket and mm. spread the inside of the the, the trout with uh, with the wild garlic pesto and then grilled it. Oh, it was really good. Wow! Now you're making me like jealous. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the wild garlic, the home cooking. But it's nice in there. I've made it. It's, it's nice in omelets as well. Just. And you can you can you can basically substitute any leafy green vegetable with it. Mm. Use it as a substitute for spinach or whatever. Yeah, I'm actually curious, like how much my weight weigh. Right, like you, you talk about the weight of the weight, the weight of the weight you put on. Yeah. <laughs> my is uh, over three pound. I use uh, over. I, I use over three pounds of weight. Yeah. I mean, this is just something that I saw on, on one website, so it's a, it's, it's a guide. Yeah. I'm, well, sure, I, I'm sure it's not going to be precision. And I also think it has a lot to do with, like, what you actually put in the mixture, right? Like, uh, like how much uh, calcium sulfate you put in, doesn't it have an effect on the... The density of your tofu, you think? Do you know what? Actually, I I'm not sure it's so much to do with that. It's it's again, it's it's kind of similar to cheese making, and mm. this is another thing that I've read, but not not going too deeply into it. But mm. when you make cheese, when mm. when you when you curdle the cheese, and and again, if you make tofu or whatever, mm -hmm. there's there's a way that you like the spoon or whatever instrument you're using that you use to cut the curds with. So mm -hmm. people will tell you, use the spoon in the pot when it curdles and you move it in like a zigzag motion. Mm -hmm. And apparently it, it cuts the curds better and then maybe you end up with smaller curds rather than bigger curds. And that helps it to press more densely. Mm -hmm. And if you've, ever, if you've ever watched like commercial cheese making, mm -hmm. um, that, that is like a big part of it, the way that they actually cut the curds before they press. Before they press it, yeah. So I think how we stirred our soy milk curdle in the pot may have an effect on how firm our tofu to like a tofu to turn out in the end. That... Exactly. So if if you just if you just pour your mix if you pour your your coagulant in your vinegar or your gypsum uh, your gypsum mixture, the 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 milk will curdle. But if you just don't touch it, it will curdle in, into quite big curds. But if you move an instrument in the pot, yeah. you know, a, a spoon or a knife or whatever, a, as it's curdling, then the curds will end up being much, much smaller. I think that that that's as I understand anyway. Yeah, my I definitely moved my ladle and I, I have relatively smaller. 
Oh, ju just, just in time there, can you see how, how close that was to boil it over? <laughs> it's like your intuitive power is like so strong, you can... You That's can... not intuitive power, that's just luck. <laughs> you, see, you see a disaster gonna happen in the future. <laughs> you saved it just in time. I'm not even kidding myself on. Right, oh cool, so I can add my gypsum now. Turn that off. Right. Yeah, I want to see you adding the gypsum and so uh, so gypsum is just so uh, the calcium sulfate we've been talking about. Yep, and for anybody who's um, because it's got a very sort of chemical name to it, for anybody who's worried about it, is a it is a completely natural product. Okay, I don't know. No, it is. It is. It, 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 these these things it, it exist completely in nature. This is. It's not a man-made product. Oh, this is so loud. I set a timer, like roughly about fifteen minutes, I think. Things I start, yeah. you know, packing uh, the thing. Like, it's not really exact, but I, I kind of yes a little bit. But this is about 15 minutes, and then I have a three pound weight. I'm done. Whether it's firm or not, I will have to lit with this block of tofu. <laughs> I love it, no matter what. <laughs> I have no doubt that you'll do many, many creative things with it, or you'll just chuck it in a hot pot. <laughs> I don't know how to make hot pot this time. Uh, did you add your gypsum already or no? I just poured it in just now, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so we're just going to watch. Can you move the camera over so we can watch the um, curdle? Yeah, I'm trying to get it closer. It's complete black screen over there. Yeah, I ran out of cable on the camera, that's all. Okay. I think that's the I think that's the best I can do. Yeah, if you mess up too much, I'll have to edit a video, which I really don't want to do. <laughs> so much work. I know. I'm sorry. I'll I'll try and not make your yeah. life too difficult, Yang. <laughs> yeah. So if your tofu is not cooperating, you better like you know dance up and down <laughs> today. <laughs> okay. Looks, I don't know. I think it looks okay. Looks good. Yeah, I think so. All right. I'm happy I, with that. Yeah, I think you can go ahead and pour it into your um box. take my out in the meanwhile so that you can see how firm it is yeah unfortunately because of the layout of my kitchen i'm not sure how uh, well i'm going to be able to uh, show this whole process here it's like lifting the veil of your bride. Oh. <laughs> I just did it. <laughs> did <you? laughs> 
<laughs> Look at this piece of tofu. The most beautiful piece of tofu because I made it. It is, it is a thing of beauty for sure. <laughs> That's for me. Okay. All right. Now, um, what else? Okay. Well, I guess we'll look at the the side. Fine. Like, um, it's it's got like a little bit of uh, space in there. I don't know. It's because my I didn't pack my curtain things like uh. tightly enough or what. Like, I, I'm sure it's not gonna affect anything. Like, you know, when you cook oh. it. I, but but the thing is, it, it doesn't actually firm up properly until it cools down. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think you'll I think you'll find that once once it cools down, it actually ends up being more dense than you think. Okay. And more consistent, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, it's probably a good idea to like uh, press it down a little more next time because I can see there are some air bubbles trapped in. So if I squeeze out all the air, it will be a little more uh, consistent. But even so, I, I, st I still think that if, if you know if you, if, we, if you were to cook this in a, a hot pot or even if you were to deep fry it, um, hypothetically, I, I think your tofu will hold together pretty well. Yeah. And of course, you're going to bring up the deep frying. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> For, for anybody, for anybody who likes tofu and has never tried deep fried tofu, you've got to try it at least once. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so done. You can't see me just now, but I'm just I'm just straining the my tofu through the um, straining the curds through a, a sieve just now. And then I'll, I'll put my tofu back into the box. I think I'll just keep it in, in shape until it cools down. Yeah. I'm not cooking it yet anyways, and this is easier for me to store in the meanwhile. I can stick into the fridge. Um, yeah, good. My organic sprouted tofu, homemade. Well, one thing I've noticed is I've got quite a lot more curds this time than I did the last time. Hmm. And I think that's probably because I pressed the I pressed the, the mixture at the beginning much more Was enthusiastically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So are we done? I can't even see you. No, that's what I'm saying. I was just I was just straining it, so I'll get my. Uh... Yeah, I do want to see you pouring into your. Can you show me your tofu press thing? Yeah. Like, show me the, the mechanics of it. <laughs> yep. I just need to find the other part of it. Yeah. And turn the camera to put the... Uh, put your tofu press in the middle. Remove the tofu press. Is that middle enough? This is my tofu press. Okay, all right. So it's got these, um, so on, on either side of it, it's got these textured. Okay. Oh, yours are pretty. Textured sort of sheets. So when you press it, you get this, you get this like nice pattern in, in, in the tofu itself. Mm -hmm. But of course it allows the liquid to, to run through as well. Yeah. But as you can see, the capacity is, is, is much, uh, much smaller than yours. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll see how see how much I can get in there. I'm not sure I'll be able to get the whole lot of it in there, but I will try. And uh, well, where the There's no sides to it. No, you... but it's got it's got this it's got this clamp. Ah, okay. All so right. that that's how you, that's how you press it. You just. But what happens in the middle? Like it, it gets squeezed out, or okay, just do it. I, I, I'll do it. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calm.
Okay, I'm completely done. Sorry? Over here. I'm completely done with mine over here. I'm just going to put it in here for the for the water. My the, my cards are really really small, which I'm I'm happy with. Yeah, I might actually have to I might actually have to do this twice. Did you strain your curves already? You did, right? Yeah, I did, yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, yours is already solid. See, I don't think, I haven't even used half of my cards, and I'm not sure if I can get much more in here, actually. And interesting, last time we used the exact amount of soybean. I, I know, but that's that's what I'm saying. We did notice last time that you ended up with much more uh, cards than I did. But I, again, I don't think that I... I don't think that I pressed the, the soybean puree as much last yeah. time as I did this time. You know what? Last time I didn't get this much tofu either. Yeah. Yeah. My my tofu was a little smaller last time. Okay, I don't think I can put much more than that in there, so let's press that and see what happens. I can get a bit more in. Maybe. Oh, it's hot. Right, let's try with that. Nice. So I'm going to tighten this as much as it can go. There's quite a lot of water coming out there. Can you see that? Yeah. Uh, lower a little bit. Yes. So I can get a good shot of the whole thing. Nice. Hmm. So I'm pressing this. I'm pressing this right down so that the two ends are touching. Yeah. So interesting. I, I think uh, your press is like a really cool gadget. Got interesting technology. Technology and pattern. <laughs> like you get the, the press pattern from the tofu. I've, uh, I've never. I've never seen another one like this. It's, it's actually. It's actually a British company that makes this. In the UK, which is is really really rare, I was really surprised to to, to read that. Okay. There we go. So, nice. oh, yours yours is so fast, so you caught up. I I had to press mine down for fifteen minutes. Well, I'm I'll leave it for a while because I think it will. If I was to tip this up, yeah, what well, I think water will press out of this for a little while. Right. So I'll I'll leave it for I'll leave it for 10, 15 minutes. Well, I don't really see more water coming out, so what's the point of leaving another 10, 15 minutes? I honestly don't know. Hmm. Right? Yeah, Maybe I can open up. We can, we can, we can have a look. Ask the Cause a, hard questions. <laughs> well, no, if, if, it, if I can take this out now, that's cool. Cause as I say, I've still got, I've got all this curds yeah. left. <laughs> right. So take this out. I want to see... Um, what it looked like. You basically just squeeze out the water by hand. And let's take it out and then you can make the next. Uh, Are you planning to cut your tofu too? Possibly, but I'm going to use a different colored chopping board so that you can see the tofu better actually. I'm not going to chop mine. I think it's good that you you get yours test out, I'm, I'm sticking mine in the fridge.
this thing actually has like a, a 10 year guarantee on it or something. Yeah. Okay, I really, you know what, this is really not in the middle of the cam the, uh, the camera frame, so um, there's no way, like, there's no way I can tell what you're doing. Okay, there we go. What about now? Yeah, good. Okay. See, it, it's definitely well pressed. It looks kind of crumbly just now, but again, I'm wondering if I should maybe leave it in here. No, it feels actually feels very firm. I mean, I'm going to take this out. Yeah, I think the uh, well, the crumbly. I'm wondering. I don't know. Like, should we just pour the really hot uh, curdle into the press? Um, See, when you when you make when you make cheese, when you make fresh cheese, you're usually told to. To rinse the curds under water and cool them down before you press it, but I don't think I've seen a single tofu recipe that tells you to do that. Yeah, no, I don't. I, that, I think that's what I'm think, saying, right? Like, don't cool it down. Like, use the hot tofu. Uh, use a hot uh, curdle. Looks nice. Yay! All right. I'm happy with that. So I'm, I'll cool that down, and I'm, obviously I'm going to make another batch. We don't have to do that on camera, but I'll cool that down in the fridge, and, and then I'll cut it. I think because it's right. actually really, really hot just now. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. All right. Well, it looks great. No. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure when it cool down, it will be a little uh, smoother, probably. Oh, I'm, I'm happy with that. Awesome. And, and I'll get another whole block out of it as well. So. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right, I think we are done. I am. Uh, I'm gonna write up this whole thing and uh, put the recipe link there. And uh, and we're gonna have. We have two ways, right? Basically, two two different options of calculin. Maybe right. put some suggestions on how to use the tofu as well, like so, deep frying. And deep frying. <laughs> You bet I will not. <laughs> Let's see how much you pay me for me to write. Like, <laughs> may never happen. All right. Okay. I'm gonna turn the thing off. And you know what? Like every single time, right? I have trouble finding the place to stop recording. Yay! Yay!